ladies and gentlemen, live from Hollywood, California, at the Improv Studios, it's the Nighttime Show. Tonight, the Nighttime Show welcomes our head writer, Matt Walker. We also have a very special guest, character actor and kick-ass performer, star of Burn Notice, Something So Right, Dear John Justified, and Angie Tribeca, Jerry Burns. And now... The star of the nighttime show and the brightest star in five galaxies, Stephen Kramer Glickman! <laughs> my favorite thing I've ever seen in my life is you said character actor, and Jerry Burns went, character actor? <laughs> the fuck did he just say? What? Motherfucker. Leading man. Really? Character actor. Yeah. Leading man, Jerry Burns. Leading Burn. man, Jerry Burns. Well, you could say leading man. Uh, it is a comedy show. Of star of right? cinema. You, <laughs> you do play a lot of Matt characters, though. Totally. A lot of weird. I was, weirds, well, I was I making know. a joke. That, no, <laughs> fucking that was brilliant. Really funny. That was amazing. I love it. Uh, Would have been better if I just threw the shit down <laughs> and walked out the door. Like, That's it. I'm out of here. <laughs> and there he goes. How <laughs> dare you? Thank you, Jerry Burns. <laughs> Good night. Trust us, he was here. <laughs> uh, it's amazing to have you on the show. We're Thanks. all big nice fans of you uh, for for different reasons. Uh, we all have our own shows that we've uh, we're big fans of. I know uh, yeah. Mike Mike uh, watched you a lot on Justified. I watched mm -hmm. every single episode of Justified, and Aww. I love that show. And your character more than any. Oh, don't don't take offense to this. Was the one that I wanted to see the comeuppance for <laughs> more. Really, he, he was the guy that oh. I was like, oh, I want it. I want him oh, to no. die. I'm, I'm He's so oh, evil. I was. I thought he was yeah. going in a totally no, different were, direction. But you were so I good. Your character <laughs> uh, beyond any of the other characters was the one. Yeah, I didn't see that she coming. Was, I Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Matt over here. Matt is a huge, massive I've been fan. Obsessed with Dear John for the last like three years, they show it late at night on <laughs> he Antenna won't shut TV. up about the show. I keep telling him, not, I was like, yeah. You gotta stay up till two in the morning and watch oh Dear God. John on it's, what channel? Uh, Antenna TV, okay. digital channel 5.2 in Los Angeles. Yeah, you can never watch it. Heard over of there. That. Uh, it's on right after the Ropers. I don't, know. <laughs> don't know what that is either. Uh, Jeffrey Tambor was in the spinoff wow. from Three's Company. Okay. Uh, called the Ropers, oh, which okay. lasted like all of six months, I think. But uh, no, the character pop, of Kurt pop, Morris. Quit, pop, mm -hmm. pop quiz. Yes. What show were Jeffrey Tambor and I either season regulars or recurring characters? Uh, Max Hedrum. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, wow. we're, we're that so good. We're talk about that. Oh, we're that, that good. You yeah. guys are geeks. Yes. Uh, but by the way, a, okay, Kirk so Morris, Kirk Morris. Kirk dear Morris, John. Yeah. I rank in my top 10 favorite TV characters of all time. Like, it's right there with oh, Al Bundy. You. Like, it was just so funny. So you didn't want to see Kirk have his comeuppance. No. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. I wanted Kirk to stick it to everyone. <laughs> Thank you. And th there was the episode. Well, okay, we'll get into it later. Okay, We're going right. to get into it. Right um, so. Before we really get started in this, and uh, first, first things first, where are you from? Where did you grow up? Uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did Home of Harvard. Yeah. Yeah, right. I get. I just learned that. I never. I didn't notice in my whole childhood. But no then, one ever then, said. Then, then, then I found out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have a family that was in the entertainment industry, or no, how did how did God this no. how did this get started? Tell us the beginning. I how this think happened. what happened was um, it's kind of boring, but I think no. you know my dad was a businessman. My mother worked at Harvard Law School, and uh, they liked the theater, so they used to drag me and my brother to the theater what kind of plays would you go musicals plays what yeah we'd see? go see uh you know we'd go see i remember uh i remember dad my dad driving dragging me and chip to see uh the uh Macbeth, uh, the scottish play at mm -hmm. boston sure. college yeah. i remember going to the music man oh, yeah. at like the melody tent in uh in hyannisport i remember just going to a i remember seeing we were little boys and we saw hair Oh wow. yeah, and oh, little boys. I mean, little, little, and those kids, and those people took their fucking clothes <laughs> off. Oh yeah, yeah, and with the with the winter bush on the. Oh, yeah. oh my god! It was you know. What was it that was, car ride home like? <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. I had never seen anything like it. I don't think my parents knew that. That I don't know how. Yeah, you know what I mean. But of course, I say I don't know how. But you didn't know. We, they didn't know a lot of shit then. There wasn't yeah. the internet. Yeah. You know, if you didn't read the right review of Hair and find out, you know, and, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I know, my mom took me to see Hair when I was about eight years old, and I was, comp I was like, 
Boobs, boobs, boobs. The whole time I was just like, there's boobs. There's so many boobs. What about boobs. the bush? What about the bush? They, it, I don't think it was not completely nude. Not, what? Not full. I think they went topless. And Where this was then that? Went Canada, right? Yeah, yeah, Canada. It was just too but, cold. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was in San Diego in like a community theater production of Hair. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, you know, okay. It was Because it's Broadway. right in the script, you know. It's yeah. right in the script, you know, and they... I know. Did I know. they say show your bush in the script? The winter like... bush. Oh, they okay. say, you know, Wow. Yeah. No, it doesn't say that. But, uh, <laughs> but, and I didn't see it on Broadway. I think I saw it at the Wilbur Theater in Boston. But wow. Did anyway, you, that's wild. Yeah. We both did you see any show. Broadway shows when you were a kid, or did you ever get to go? Yeah, I mean, we uh, we went to New York. I don't remember seeing anything on the Broadway, but I just remember going to a lot of plays, and I remember. Uh, you know, we were in that production of The Music Man, and my dad tells a story like that. We were in this production, and the audience was just dead, 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 dead. They weren't the the, the actors were getting nothing from the audience. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, there's a scene where all these men are on uh, a train, like chugging into a station, yeah. and they're all holding on to mm -hmm. some, you know, an imaginary strap or yeah, and and then the train comes to a stop, and they all smash into each other. And I guess my brother and I, you know, just fucking cracked up like <laughs> lunatics and the audience laughed at us laughing at that Great. and then they had the audience because the you audience kind of unwound and i remember going whoa <laughs> recognizing that you know we got the oh, audience that that i got the audience to laugh yeah wow like, wow you man. changed the whole course of the entire night yeah i mean i didn't care about that i just i what i cared about was they reacted to me <laughs> right yeah. do you know what That's i mean and yeah. i think something got planted there and then i went to um high school and i played sports but then towards we had a great little it was a, a small private school and we had a great um theater department mm -hmm. so like in 10th 11th 10th 11th 12th grade even 9th grade we were doing like really cool plays you know like uh I think the first one was the Kane Mutiny Court Martial that I was ever in, wow. but that was like in ninth grade. And then, you know, by 11th grade, we were doing 10th grade. We were doing Chekhov and Shakespeare and, nice. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's heavy and stuff for Sart. teenagers. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was like, it was, um, it was, when was this? It was like the seventies, you know, mm -hmm. where people, especially in Cambridge, Massachusetts, you were getting, kids were yeah. getting exposed intellectually to stuff sure. that, that's great. You know, like really well-rounded sort of. Yeah. Theater back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, um we'd 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 gone through as as elementary schoolers and middle schoolers, you know, the 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 six the late sixties. Do you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. They oh were God, they were okay. burning shit down. Harvard Square Jeez. had no glass in any of the storefronts for like it seemed like two years in the late sixties. And I used to have to take my you know, they just because every time they put new glass in the demonstrations would just destroy oh, everything. Everything <sighs> wow. was all boarded up. So I was used to going to school in the late 60s on the public transportation, you know, with boarded up windows, tear gas kind of still hanging to the walls of Harvard Yard, you know, and like walking. You know, so I was used to like there was a revolution in this country. Wow. You know, yeah, and I was yeah. I was a young kid during it. So, you know. Romeo and Juliet didn't seem like that big a deal. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. Yeah, totally. That's amazing when you think like your generation saw like the first guy killed on TV and like uh, we the, saw the we, moon landing and stuff. We had a know? president killed on our. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. It, we had just him amazing. and he, we had his brother and then we had Martin Luther King and we oh, were just like, God. it was just like we were little kids, you know, and yeah. they were just, they were just slaying all the, all the people that our parents, um, Looked up to, yeah. yeah. Who yeah. Re who represented, you know, the United States of America to us? Mm -hmm. right. sure. Do you know what I mean? That's what, especially being God. in the Boston area, having that happen to both the Kennedys, it must have been. Even... Yeah, I mean, oh, oh my God. God. Yeah, yeah, if you were Irish or Catholic or you were Democrat, and the yeah. Kennedys were like everybody had a everybody had a you know had a picture of JFK in their living room, or every every wow. family and every grandparent, they mm -hmm. all had a you know. We didn't have a crucifix, but we, actually yeah. we had crucifixes in our room. But you know, there was always that picture of JFK that was a staple. Yeah, like wow. talk about like during World War II, every household in America had a pic had a portrait of FDR on their wall. Yeah. Like it was just like a thing. Every household yeah. in America just had yeah. it during who World puts War II. A, who puts a portrait of the president on their wall? Just, yeah, that, when, yeah. Like now it's done out of irony, but like you right, know, right. Back yeah. then, it was a serious thing. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Did, have you ever, as an actor, gotten to work on a project that took place in that time period of your no. youth? Mm -mm. Is that something that you want to do? Yeah. I mean, I was obsessed with the whole 
you know, by the time I got to high school and then college, I was obsessed by with the whole um, Kennedy assassination, the Cass- mm-hmm. Kennedy assassination conspiracy theories. You know, I, yeah. I got in on the ground floor of that. That that mm-hmm. fascinated me because I remember as a kid, like we, my parents had a copy of the Warrant Report. Do you guys mm-hmm. know what the Warrant Report? Yeah, it, warrant report. yeah, yeah. it was yeah. a Warrant Report. That was that was like you know. Open, open and shut. This is what happened. Oswald was alone. <laughs> mm-hmm. This yeah. is how it happened. And I remember just like looking through that as a little kid, you know, like trying to. And then when I started to hear all this other stuff, I went to a lecture, probably 19 years old, about the, um, you know, given by the Assassination Information Bureau, they called themselves. <laughs> wow. And they would, and they would tr- you know, they would tour all the colleges, you know, and there's so many colleges. And we went, I went, to, we went to hear the, me and a buddy went to hear him speak at BC one time, and it was just blew my mind. So. Did, did you meet Oliver Stone there or anything like no, that? No, this is way before he was, <laughs> yeah. he, he was, where was I'm he? I'm sure he must have been into it. At he was time. a kid. Yeah. He was a kid. Yeah. No, this is when he was a kid too. You know. Now, after all of this, is there a theory that you subscribe to currently? No, I don't know. No, I don't know. No. I, I can't see. I mean, I can't. I, I still can't. I still can't believe. I still can't believe that Oswald was able to do yeah. what he was able, what they allege he was able to do. But I don't yeah. know how many people were involved in. I mean, there were so many. There were so many entities out to to kill JFK. Yeah. You know? Anytime they've yeah. tried to recreate someone pulling those shots off, it it just looks impossible. Yeah. Especially you know? with the rifle that he did yeah. it with that was like <laughs> the you know, bolt action the sort bolt. of I've always liked the full metal <laughs> yeah. jacket explanation where uh-huh. they talk about uh, in the one scene Arlie Ermey's talking to the to the troops and he's like right. talking about like, Hey, did you know about Charles Whitman? And they talk about him at the top of the the uh, book Te- tower in Texas. In, in and he's Austin, like, yeah. he's like, he shot fourteen people with a whatever rifle. And he's like, Lee Harvey Oswald. Do you know who that is? He's like, he shot the president, sir. Yeah. And he's like, do you know, do you know where these two men learned how to shoot? In the Marines. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that just shows you what one motivated Marine and his rifle can do. Uh, wow, that's yeah. uh, good. God. And that's think, in Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, wow. I forgot. You about know what? That. In Full yeah. Metal Jacket. Side side note: uh, mm-hmm. the, the actor that played Doc in Full Metal Jacket. Yeah. Do you remember that guy? He gets shot a bunch of times at the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> if you haven't seen a movie that came out in 1987 yet, sorry <laughs> about Vietnam. Spoiler alert. <laughs> this one ep- of the soldiers gets shot a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is very quick story, but but true. He was my acting teacher when I was in acting school, like as a you know in college, like acting mm-hmm. school. Mm. And um, he told the story that when they, after they finished wrapping that movie, uh, he was he thought he was like. What's the actor's name? Um, we can look it up. Okay, can you pull it up? It's not. It's not someone we would have ever heard of. No, no, he hasn't really worked ever since. Okay, you're, okay. You're so acting well, I don't care. Who, it doesn't matter. It doesn't who matter. left such an impression <laughs> yeah. on you that we're going to look but him somehow up on he, IMDb? But, but somehow he got into that movie. He was in the movie and he played Doc in the okay. movie. And. Um, in Full Metal Jacket. And so when they were wrapping the movie, he decided to be like, hey, screw all y'all. I'm a, I'm going to be a, I'm a big deal. I'm going to shave my head into a mohawk. And so he shaved his head into a mohawk to go to the premiere mm. of John Metal Stafford. Jacket. That is who it is. Yes. Wow. So John Stafford shaved his head into a mohawk so that he could go to the premiere with a mohawk. And the day before the premiere, he had an audition for Big for the Tom Hanks role in Big. And they brought him in and they looked at him <laughs> and they said, why, did, why is your hair like that? And he said, because I'm in full metal jacket. I'm the best. And they were like, get the fuck <laughs> out of here. And his agent dropped him and and whoever else was repping him dropped him. And he literally didn't work for like 20 years. That, after that. You know, it's never a good idea to shave your head too <laughs> premature because uh, I, I did a play I got my equity card in the at the New York Shakespeare Festival, and uh, and I got and the play we did was uh, uh, Don Juan by uh, Moliere, mm-hmm. oh, and wow. it was directed by Richard Foreman, who was like this he he was just the craziest uh, <laughs> experimental director you you know that's ever that pretty much ever come through New York, and his theater company still exists today, the Hysterical Ontological Theater Company or whatever. And anyway. We were all in period dress, you know, it was to be done completely in period, and Don Juan, you know, he would give directions like, Don, uh, John, John, to John Sides who played Don Juan, I wonder what it would be like if um, if Don Juan walked like a crab. So he set really <laughs> early on that Don Juan had to walk like a crab, and he could never, 
he could, and he had to walk in right angles. So if he wanted to go, so if he wanted to have like a crab, so if yeah. he wanted to go over there, he, he had to go, go sideways. up there, up there, up there, and that's how. Anyway, wow, it was just a crazy production. But there were we were all these like sort of ensemble kids who were getting their equity cards straight out of school, and there's this one guy who was just like crazy, but they hired him because he was just. You know, he was he he was kind of moving because he was so crazy. Well, he used to he used to say inappropriate things, blah blah blah. And Richard said we were all going to have to wear bald pates in the show because at one point in the show we all had like Elizabethan costumes and long wigs. Mm -hmm. But at yeah. one point, Richard had us all stand out there, all of the ensemble, and for at some beat, we all just went <clears throat> and pulled our wigs off to expose a bald head. Mm -hmm. And now I'm thinking about it. This is a stupidly boring story. <laughs> no, but, that's but, great. But there, it but he said, so but he, like but he said, but he said, he told us, you know, well, um, so we are going to do the bald pate thing. I mean, we are going to do the bald thing. Now you can shave your heads, um, <laughs> or you can just wear bald pates. I will say, you know, it's going to be humid New York nights. The Delacorte is outside. You're in Central yeah. Park. It's like an incredible yeah. oh thing. You're outside, but it's humid. It's like 80 degrees some nights and humid. And so you have on a ball pate, then you have on a wig. I mean, it was, <laughs> I mean, it was fucking brutal. Yeah. So this one guy who was weird, he decided to shave his head. He was the only one of us who shaved his head. He shaved his head. And the next day in rehearsal, he gave Richard Foreman a note. On Richard's foreman, on Richard, <laughs> and, he, and he was gone. <laughs> Similar to your story, he got fired. They replaced him, and he now was out there auditioning with a bald head, oh, much wow. like your God. Similar story. That's Long hard. way to go. No, Forgive it's me. Fine. You can now, uh, you can cut that out. Did you uh, did you study acting in college? No, I was an English major. Oh really? Where'd you go? Uh, UMass Amherst. Oh, yeah. I was really hoping you were going to end with, and that guy was, and it was going to be someone amazing. <laughs> and that was... <laughs> John yeah. Denver. Uh, you know, uh, real quick before we continue, uh, Matt, uh, I was over at the uh, the Grove. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's we, a happening place. Yeah, we were there together. We were went having there this weekend, yeah. It was such a nice time. We were hanging out. We went over to the Cheesecake Factory, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a little lunch over there. And then uh, I had a couple, I went to the bar. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you took off, but uh, I had, I went to the bar and hung out a little bit. I ended up having a fireball moment, which was pretty uh, oh, really pretty cool. What Graham, happened this time, Graham? You ever uh, you ever have a fireball moment? Yeah. Um, do you know what that is? Do you know yeah. what a fireball? I'll tell. I'll explain is it, it to is you. Is it that uh, whiskey? Yeah. Here's yeah. what happens: is uh, Graham and uh, you know, Matt knows uh, when you sometimes when you drink fireball whiskey, the, things just get heightened. Everything gets a little yeah. crazier. The world, you know, opens up. You see things that you never would see before. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I'm over there. I had, uh, I had two shots, you know, mm -hmm. like I normally do, and then I uh, started walking around the Grove. I'm out, you know, and I was shopping. I was a uh, Walking around, you know, there's kids and people with their dogs. There's lots of dogs around and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I turned down a corner that I'd never been down before. It's over by where the C's Candy Shop is. Mm -hmm. I turned down that corner. As I'm walking down that little alleyway, I, uh, I don't know it's going to sound weird, but I saw a unicorn. A unicorn? Like an actual unicorn. And I thought maybe it was just like a horse and then somebody like stuck something on. Yeah. It is a real unicorn it had rainbow hey its hair was rainbows and it sparkled mm -hmm. and it had an actual horn coming out of its head and uh and it talked it could talk which is crazy right wow. i was i was like uh um, what did it say well i said uh i said oh my god is that a unicorn yes it is oh wow you can and you can talk of course wow this is amazing i had I had no idea that unicorns could talk. Well, we can. Wow, that's a it's really we can do all sorts of stuff. Really? What else can you do? What we else can, can you talk, do? Talk, I can release marshmallows from a butt. Oh my gosh. Uh, can but, I can I have one of those? Sure, hang on just a sec. What? Oh my Oh, hang did, on. Did you hang, eat a unicorn butt marshmallow? I I actually ate about 4 unicorn butt butt mar marshmallows and it was amazing. Each you one's a different flavor. Oh, they were so good. It was like fruity pebbles. It was so delicious. It was like lifesavers. You know how they you think that they're mm -hmm. all different? They look like different flavors, but then they kind of all taste the same sort of. Uh, but it was so it was it was delicious and uh, better than anything at Seas Candy, I'll tell you that, you know? So then, uh, me and the unicorn, uh, we started hanging out. We started wandering around the grove. 
Oh, know? there's that trolley I like. Oh, yeah. I love that trolley. <laughs> hi, kids. Hi, mom, dad, hey, everybody. Hey, I'm with a unicorn. Hi, Japanese businessman. <laughs> hi, Japanese businessman, too. Nice Have to see fun. you. Have fun. Yeah. Oh, wow, man. I love that trolley. That's a good time. And then we uh, we took a little wander over to Barnes & Noble. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that still exists, that place? Yeah. Man, that thing should be extinct. Huh? <laughs> right, unicorn? That sure is right, Stephen. They keep asking me about it, getting a card, and they're $25 for one of them cards. That's so and weird. And then it's like, well, if I'm getting a discount, what do I need to pay Wait. you $25 Wait, to get a discount? Wait, the unicorn can on? read? Yeah. Oh, unicorns can do lots of things. I thought unicorns were illiterate. Oh, no, no, no. Not this unicorn. Wow. This unicorn was a... Was a well-read unicorn. I don't just and, uh, sit around farting out marshmallows all day. I read books. <laughs> yeah, so I actually said, "Hey, unicorn, would you like to have a shot of Fireball whiskey? Would you like? I don't know if unicorns drink." I would love drink. a shot of Fireball whiskey. We, well, here you go. What's whiskey? Oh, it's this. Uh, it's this great stuff. It's like cinnamon flavor. Try this out. I'll give it a whirl. <laughs> <laughs> Is delicious <laughs> and uh and just like that um the unicorn died wow yeah just right there in the middle of the trolley tracks and then Rest the trolley peace. yeah the trolley unicorn. came back and ran over the unicorn wow and uh i'm not allowed to go to the grove anymore so we'll have to go somewhere That's a else. hell of a fireball moment it was a hell of a fireball moment folks and um that's the best part about fireball you never know what's gonna happen mm -hmm. Anyways, let's get back into the show. <laughs> so did you go, when did, how did you move from theater into television or like, I know, was your first, what was your first so I went. So game? I went, so going, so in college, I, I was an English major, but um, I, they had, they had a really good theater department there. I didn't mm -hmm. want to major in drama, but I wanted to, I felt like I needed to be, um, you know, smart and get an English degree. <laughs> like that was going to be. Uh, that was going to be practical. So I did that, but I used to audition for all of their plays, you right. know, all their main stage plays. And, um, you know, I had done enough acting in high school that I kind of knew what I was – I mean, I didn't know what I was doing at all. But I had a lot of experience on stage. Sure. You know? So I had no yeah. craft. I had no technique. But I had – you know, I had my instincts. You had, you had bravado. I had bravado. I had instincts, and they were better than most of the guys in that department. Sure. I so I would get all the lead role. I would get yeah, I'd get a lot of lead roles, and I played a lot of, um, a lot of. I played. I did a lot of plays. I'd like do two plays a year. So by the time I got out of there, I'd done like eight plays. Mm -hmm. You know, in in and and I I was awful. But I was better than anyone else. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> sure. I was I awful. You. The directors were awful. But the, it was a state school, and they had just built this performing arts center. So they had this amazing facility with amazing lights, and everything was computerized, and nothing had been computerized prior to that. Sure, you know, it was yeah. Like guys pulling on ropes and shit. <laughs> and this is just pressing buttons and lights. And so we had, like, all the – so I did that. And then at the end of uh, – towards the end of college, I thought, ah. Oh, I want to. I think I want to be an actor. Maybe I'll give that a shot. So I went to this guy, Dick Trousdell, who was a professor in the drama department. And I said, "Yeah, Dick." Oh no! Before I went to Dick, I said, "I towards in the middle of my senior year, I went to Dick because I thought like I'm fucking so talented and so amazing." I went to Dick and I said, "Hey, listen, you know, I think I might want to. I think I might want to do some. I create a production on my own here at the at the at the um, at the drama department." Because I really want to, I just want to show off my talents. I, I, I probably didn't say it like that, but that's <laughs> basic. It. That's I what I meant. It. That's what I. That's what I meant. And he's like, "Oh, okay. Um, well, what did you have in mind?" And I said, "Well, what I was thinking of was a one man show." <laughs> Great. Now, I had no idea. I, I didn't know what the <laughs> fuck that meant. Why? All I knew you in knew my term. in my narcissistic, egotistical. <laughs> way i just knew that meant all me all the time <laughs> yeah. and i'm like and i'm like yeah so could you help me do could you help me construct a one-man show and you know i'm thinking they're gonna put it on their schedule and stuff. <laughs> right. i don't know what that's how insane i was that's how I fucking full of just the fucking actor's ego, ego and... narcissism oh god me 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 and he very kindly, instead of saying, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? What, what, are you, what are you talking about, you <laughs> fucking stupid kid? He said, well, you know what? I've always found that acting is most compelling when it's one person talking to another person. 
So I think what you've been doing here has been great. You know, you get into a production and then you get the uh, mm -hmm. you, get, you get to talk to other people, and that's really what's compelling about the theater. I'm like, hmm. And I just dismissed it. It was like, well, <laughs> agree to disagree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we'll agree to disagree, Dick. Uh, yeah. And, I, oh, and I probably did. But anyway, so when I when I was graduating, I wanted to either you know be I wanted to give it a shot, so I went to um, him and I said <laughs> he was still he still took my. He still let me in his office, and I, he's, I said, "So if I wanted to be an actor, what would I do? Would I go to New York, is just walk around and try and get you know discovered or audition or what would I?" Do? He said, "Well, what I would do if I were you is I would audition for um, all the uh, professional training programs. You know, like there's Yale mm -hmm. and there's NYU and there's Juilliard yeah. and there's you know." And I said, "Oh, okay. Well, how do you do that?" And then he, he showed me something I could fill out to get into the. Um, to do an audition to get into the auditions mm -hmm. that got you, you had to do an audition to get an audition yeah. to any of sure. those schools. And got then it. once you got an audition for those upper level schools, you could you would go there and audition. So that's what happened. I went to I went to uh, and I ended up going to NYU to the Tisch School of the Arts. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. And then great I last, school. Lasted there a year and a half, and then I decided I can't do this anymore. I got to get out there and decide, you know, see if it's going to be a reality. So I left. That's when I got the job at the at the uh, at the Shakespeare Festival. Wow, Delacorte Theater. Great. Okay. Did that with the wigs and the bald with the cap. wigs and bald and the kid with the shaved his head. <laughs> right. And uh, and then um, and then you know after that I just sort of they took some pity on me over at the at the Shakespeare Festival. They'd give me understudying jobs because I was having a baby, like oh, twenty six, wow. having wow. a baby with my girlfriend, who then became my first wife. And um, and we ended up having three kids together in quick succession. Don't fucking ask me why. <laughs> That's how fucking crazy I was. And by then, I'm drink. I'm also drinking a lot. Oh, <laughs> drinking yeah. a lot. Yeah. This is late seventies. At this point. Mm, no, no, no. I was in. Co I was in high school. I went to cop. <laughs> oh God. So I'm in. I'm in. No, this is uh, like just mid eighties. This is mid eighties. Mid eighties. Okay. Mid eighties. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mid early. No, early to mid eighties. Okay. Right. I'm having three kids and wow. um, and drinking a lot and <laughs> acting a lot. You know, somehow, you know, it was just part of the actor's life in New yeah. York. Yeah. You know, you yeah. just like you drink. This is in New York too. This is right? in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Drink, you, the act, you drink. You act. Eighties in New York. You are... I couldn't even imagine. Yeah, how yeah, crazy yeah. Crazy that must have been. I didn't really get into the coke thing so much. I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, I kind of did. Yeah. But I mean, I like. I, I think everyone kind of. No, no, no. I like... excuse me. I didn't kind of get into it. I got into it, but I didn't get into. It. <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that. But I, but I, but I wasn't like. I had. Uh, I he had wasn't Sam Kinnison. Kinnison. He's saying. Right. No, I wasn't yeah. Sam Kinnison. I, I look if... forward to the phone call tomorrow about remember that part where I talk about all the cocaine. Can we cut that? And no, no, no. I w I was just by then. I was just a drinker. And when you added coke, <laughs> yeah. sure, it was. Oh, yeah. You know, it was. Look, no one was knew. A, that was a no, crazy I didn't time. know. N and nobody. I didn't knew. know where my car was going to be, or how I was going to get home, <laughs> or who I was going to be with, yeah, or sure, you yeah. know. I remember we used to call the the uh, the the. the Versateller machines where you would put your mm -hmm. card in and get money because those all came kind of came about at that time. Yeah, yeah. You guys are too young to remember ATM. that. That's a but dangerous. I remember when ATMs sort of came out. It was like oh, you in do. junior high school. Okay, okay, okay. We used to call dangerous combination. We used to call we used to call them Coke machines. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. I never heard that so when wow. did you get into uh, TV and film? Because you were doing theater okay, so there. So I'm in doing New York theater in New York. I get into a production of. Um, True West in New oh, York. Sam Shepard. Oh, God. Sam Amazing. Shepard. Not only Sam Shepard, but sort of the um, seminal production of True West that oh, wow. done by John. Uh, the actors were Gary Sinise and John Malkovich. Oh, wow. so the oh, Steppenwolf Theater Company. Yeah, they had brought wow. that production to New York. That was like their first production that they brought to New York. That yeah. that was their bridge into New York. That, that is amazing. Were you that, in that production? I had a man. I had, an, I had an agent at the time. He goes, "So can I do anything for you?" Oh. I, I he he I submitted to him. He brought me in to have an interview, and he said, "Oh, you seem like a nice kid. What can I do for you?" And I said, "You could submit me as the general understudy over a True West because I had just yeah. seen True West. Fucking blew my it's mind. A great God. play. Blew if you haven't seen it, blew my mind. Yeah. And um, and that is the seminal production. Yeah. And um, and it's you can find it on yeah. PBS. It's black and white, I think. And mm -hmm. it's just like a a. a a videotaping of the production. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
but it's well, no, it's, but it's, it's worth more, checking. It's out. more than that. They have different angles and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, that play so, and that play and Hurley Burley are the two that I was obsessed with in college. Yeah, 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 I've yeah. Always wanted to do. So, um, so they, I got the job. I went over there, and they said, the producers I remember said, "Have you seen the production?" I said, "No, no, no. <laughs> I've just I'm familiar with the play, but I totally seen the production like five days earlier, <laughs> and I'm a pretty good mimic." So mm-hmm. I got up, I got up there, and I did like a pretty spot on John Malkovich. Oh, wow. and they're like, "Holy fuck!" They're the two producers. They're like, "Holy fuck! You haven't seen the show?" I'm like, "No, <laughs> no. This is just my interpretation of." The part. Or so, I don't know what I said. I don't know what I said. And they're like, "Fuck!" So they hired me. Yeah. To, oh my god! To, what to, this guy's got great instincts. Wow. Wow. Oh my god! He and he and Malkovich have the same sort of uh, instincts. <laughs> And so, uh, and so, I understudied both brothers Mm -hmm. and the producer. So I had to know the entire play, and then, um, and then, you know, when one guy was sick, shortly after that, they both left, and new people started coming in. They uh, they started bringing in actors from L.A. to keep the show going, Mm -hmm. like um, 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 Quaid, Quaid, Dennis Quaid, Dennis Quaid, and Randy Quaid. Yeah. Randy Quaid. Oh, they, they had them both in together. Yeah, they playing the brothers. Oh, and it was, that's it was, awesome. It was quite. Oh, a, it was a God. great production. It was a great production. Wow. And then they had. Uh, then they brought in. Um, so they did it together, and I did both. And I, when one of them was sick or or too coked out, I would do. <laughs> I would do. I would do the other part. So I, you know, so I was, oh, and they're basic, and they're basically the same character. Yeah, they're yeah. just two sides of the same person. Right. And right. Uh, so I did that, and this is like. I've been out of school now for two years. So out of acting school. So this is like the best acting training Mm -hmm. one could imagine. Oh my God. Outrageous. Yeah. And then, so then they left and they didn't have, um, they, they, they they were bringing in one actor, Gary Cole. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love Gary Cole. He's great. From uh, Office Space. Yeah. 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 And a gajillion other things. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It's Lumberg on Office Space, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, so anyway, Gary and I did it. He did it. He did it for a while. Oh, they first they brought in him and Jim Belushi, and he did it with Jim. Jesus. Wow. And Jim did like the Second City for impro- you know, version of yeah. <laughs> of Lee. How was yeah. Jim to work with? Um, I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, all right. <laughs> but but cool. then but when when so anyway so then Jim did leave eventually. Um, I like Jimmy. Jimmy's yeah. a Jimmy. Jimmy is a Jimmy's a good guy. Jimmy's a great guy. The look, my only Jimmy story out is is he said uh, he said one night really offhandedly to me, mm. yeah, um, don't schedule anything for Sunday night. <laughs> you know, this is like Wednesday. He said it real quick. Yeah, don't don't schedule anything. Meaning, be ready to go on on Sunday night. Sure. But he said it Wednesday, but you know, I. I didn't remember that. I was, you know, I don't, I didn't remember that. So Saturday night I went out and I got totally fucking shit faced, <laughs> drunk, high, whatever. Oh, and then Sunday rolls around and I'm kind of just like, I'm, I'm, I've got, I'm having a couple of beers, you know, hair of the dog. I'm having the cheeseburger fries, <laughs> you know, like I'm just trying to fill up. The you know just trying to pass out from food and a couple of beers and just right. like just fucking pass out and 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 start tomorrow you know start tomorrow you know I, <laughs> so, I oh, basically yeah. had yeah. canceled the day and I was just like <laughs> and I remember we were at kind of a cookout at some friends' houses and I was just like oh, 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 yeah maybe I, I probably back then it would probably took me like six beers to get back to like ground zero wow. so right. I probably had six beers and a burger and fries and this you know and I'm just like can't wait to get to bed but i gotta check in at the theater just to make and you know you usually just check in and right. you go no you're all clear you're all clear because 90 percent of the time you're all clear yeah right <laughs> yeah jim's not here you got to go on i was like <laughs> what? <laughs> what anyway i had to go on that night mm-hmm. <laughs> with a belly full of uh you know still hung over blah 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 and it was such a good experience because i could not act I could not <laughs> act. And it's just really interesting when you take a young actor's ability to act out of the equation. Because that's all we know. Because we don't know really how to tell the truth succinctly yet through yeah. what, 
We don't sure. we don't know how to do that. We don't trust ourselves enough to do that. But you're <laughs> always like, ah, ah, and I couldn't act, and it was one of the better performances I ever gave. Oh, wow. that's cool. Yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. You just stripped it all down to the essentials. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, pl- I mean, there was so much violence in that play. People got hurt all the time. There was, vi- yeah. I don't know. Do you remember? Did you see the? Yeah, they, I have not seen it. Oh, they trashed they, the entire apartment. Tra- I mean, there's so much violence and there's toast and you're rubbing fucking burnt toast <laughs> in the other guy's face. You have to do it in a certain way because toast can really fuck up your face. Oh, it was yeah. just, Malkovich and Sinise had created this thing where. Jesus. Yeah. Where it was just violent. It's basically violent. It's about two brothers who kind of despise each other. Yeah. Writing a screenplay together. <laughs> because they're thrown into this situation. You guys yeah. got yeah. to read the yeah. play. Or, yeah. 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 And yeah. check yeah. out the PBS uh, yeah. version of it with Malkovich. Mm-hmm. I would. It is tremendous. Yeah. Yeah. I, remember, yeah. I remember Gary telling a story about Malkovich where Malkovich would grab him. Malkovich was the big brother. He was the little brother. Yeah. And Malkovich had established in rehearsal that he would, in order to Gr- gr- drag Lee, Gary's character, across the stage. He would reach into his mouth with this finger <laughs> and just like gr- gr- pull him across the stage <laughs> by the roof of his mouth, like mm-hmm. yeah, oh, fish hook there. like that. Jesus. Like now, it was crazy. And I remember Gary saying, "Yeah, I remember going to John and saying, John, I'm getting all these fucking sores in my mouth. Can you figure out another way uh-huh. to pull me across the stage?" And I guess Malkovich was just like. How else, how else am I supposed to do it? You know, like, there was only one way. There was only one way. So anyway, oh so Gary God. and I, and then Gary and I, uh, Gary, uh, John left, and then I took over John's part. Mm-hmm. You know, they finally put me on the marquee, put my name up there, and, oh, and Gary and I, and, and we became best friends and our best friends as a result of that till today. That's wow. awesome. He's yeah. incredible too. That's so amazing. Did you, uh, how did you jump from that to Hill Street Blues? Was Hill Street Blues the first? No. Or? So they called me, I got a, I, I auditioned for a, uh, for a, a movie in New York playing a hockey player. Was it an after uh, school special? No, uh, it wasn't. It was wasn't a play called school. Touch and Go with Michael Keaton. It was a play. Oh, I no, 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 no. It was a movie. movie. It was a yeah. movie yeah. called Touch wow. and Go. Oh, wow. They that. came and went. It was pretty, pretty awful. <laughs> but um, they auditioned a bunch of guys to play this one character, the character of Levesque. And the actors in New York kept saying, yeah, I can play hockey. Yeah, I can play. Because this guy needed to play hockey. Right. This character. And then they'd get him out there. They'd fly them out there. They'd put him up in a hotel. And the actor couldn't Can't skate. skate. Yeah. yeah. So. They kept auditioning guys, and then they called me, and they said, can you meet at the Sky Rink and, and skate for our blah, blah, blah guy? Mm-hmm. So I did, and that's how I got the job. So I went, I flew out to do this movie, and, um, and while I was out there, um, my, in my New York, my, my L.A. agents who were affiliate, who were with my New York agents said, you know, we auditioned for a couple of things for us, and I did, and Hill Street Blues, and then, you know. When you're an actor from New York, they just, at that age, they just put you on every television show as the bad guy you know yeah. they're just yeah. you yeah. just cycle you cycle through every show because you had a pretty big role in Hill Street Blues as a rapist it was a two-parter yeah yeah and that's a that's a legendary show Stephen Botchko you know yeah, well the at first... the time at the time like you got a yeah it was like the biggest show on that television. was yeah no it's enormous. I think I, I saw something not too long on on C- I think I was watching CNN and they had this thing about sort of like the history of prestige television they talked about that being like one of the landmark shows as yeah. like the first yeah. network show where the quality was as good as what you could go see in a movie. Right. That right. was, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. I mean, you know, the, you know, and, and Bochco went on to do L.A. Law and NYPD Blue and all. I mean, every everything amazing. Everything he's everything done. Everything touched with gold. Yeah. Phenomenal. Even Cop Rock was fantastic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And really a very nice show. And a very nice man. I was with him on a plane and really nice guy. Recently. Really? I mean, recently, where I got to say, hey, you know, my first job on television was, uh, was, uh, was with you, with mm-hmm. your show, Hill Street wow. Blues. He was like, oh. You know, he was he was really, really sweet. Oh, that's, oh, so that's cool. great. Oh, I saw as, him as, speak as, at commencement once at Carnegie Mellon when I was there. Oh, One of the wow. years he was came back, because that's where he went to school. So. As opposed to, I had this experience the other day. Who's that little, oh, I'm going to forget his name. Who's, what's his name? Who uh, Who's the, the dicky producer with the spiky hair? Um, who is, Brian Grazer? Brian Grazer. Mm-hmm. So I was having dinner with a buddy of mine. Oh, no, we were in New York. Uh, at the upfronts for Angie Tribeca, which I'm sure okay. we'll get to. Which, yeah, yeah. We'll get to. We'll it's, get to. We, yeah. So, um, and I got in an elevator with one of the co- my co actors from that show, and I get in, and I'm, and Brian Grazer's there, standing there with some of his, you know, his people, and my buddy Hayes MacArthur is standing there too, and I look, and I'm like, it's Brian Grazer. I go, hey, whoa, Brian, I'm Jerry Burns. I did. 
I did one of the first movies I ever did was with you, your company, uh, Greedy. Mm-hmm. He, he Greedy, and, and um, he's like, oh God. <laughs> Oh God! Oh, that was such a horrible movie. <laughs> I mean, what a fucking douchebag! Crowded elevator. Oh, I'm like, I swear no. to God, he was like, <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, him. And I'm like, Brian, come on, Kirk Douglas. Kirk Douglas was in it. Michael J. Fox, me, Ed Begley, Colleen Camp. He's like, oh God, oh, oh God! That's I'm like, amazing. oh Brian, come on, Brian, what what's more- shitty? Oh, what a fucking tool! Oh, so God. I love that you're trying to sell him on this movie. That, I know that, that he, he produced, could- and I'm like, and I, and so like, cut to two weeks later, um, Hayes and I are having a uh, lunch or dinner, a little quick dinner at the chateau. Like mm-hmm. my second time at the chateau. Don't think I'm a guy that goes to the chateau. <laughs> hey, it's all right. But sure. Hayes hey suggested it. We had to get some, we had to be somewhere right next to there. So he said, Yeah, let's go to the chateau. I'm like, Fine. So we go to the chateau and he goes, Your buddy's over there. And I look and there's Brian Grazer. And I'm like, Dude, dude, you have got to film this. I'm going over there. Yes. I'm going to go oh, over yes. there, but you got to film it because no one's going to believe it. He's like, Dude, I'm not going to. And I'm like, You're such a fucking pussy. You're such a fucking pussy. You got, that's amazing. I should have just gone over by myself so he could watch from a distance. It's me but, from Greedy. Hey, yeah. Brian, remember? Yeah. Jerry Burns. <laughs> I starred in your movie Greedy, remember? <laughs> How fun was that? Oh my gosh, you're such a fun guy. He's full of so much life and love. You fucking, you fucking tool. Oh, that's the best thing oh, I've so ever funny. heard. Yeah. I love it. Uh, all right, all right. Well, you you have we have a, a bunch of stuff we got to get through. Please, I'm sorry. I wanna, I've taken no, 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 so no, much no. boring you, time. No, you're the I best. Should, you're I should leave I now. Hit. I should leave now. No, don't leave. <laughs> Please don't. All right. Um, you did. Okay. I, uh, I just one thing. I don't want to talk about any of the television. Okay. Oh, okay. Just no, wanted to, I just really want to talk about the theater in my early days. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best thing I've ever heard. Okay. Um, uh, well, you know what? Before we get to this, and I, I do want to hit this, uh, you you did Hairspray on Broadway. Right? I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you yeah. Pl- who did you play in? I played uh, Wilbur. The the dad. Yeah, right? the dad. It's so much fun. Best. Oh who my was God. your who was the, my your wife? my my wife was an actor named Paul Vogt. Oh, from Mad TV. Yeah. Oh, amazing. I was because as I was saying it, I'm like, God. no one. They're not going to know who Paul. Oh, and I then I'm who... looking, and then I look around, I'm like, these guys are going to know who Paul. <laughs> we know is. who yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah, that was a great. Who uh, who was directed? Who was who was the lead girl in that in that one when you guys did? Who was oh, the main? Oh God. Girl? Um, I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember. When did you do the show? Was it the revival or was it the like? No, it was on Broadway. Yeah, but it was one of you know one of the la- later casts. Amazing. Um, but Amazing. it was such a great experience. You know, I hadn't. I saw. I saw. Um, a play called Urine Town. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> you see Urine Town? I got a story for you. You're not going to believe. Okay. It. <laughs> You, so I I did a show on Broadway. I worked. Get I was the uh, fuck out yeah. Of here. So I played Shrek. You've trod the boards. Oh well, no, <laughs> sort of. Here's here's how this worked. Uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg, David Geffen, and Sam Mendes produced yeah. Shrek the Musical on yeah, Broadway. Yeah, no, I remember. Okay, so I played Shrek in Shrek the Musical for all the readings and all the Broadway workshops. Motherfucker. All the way up until two months before the show opened, and then they replaced me with Brian Darcy James. That's how that went down. <laughs> they replaced they, the entire cast. They replaced no, no. Yeah. They replaced a few people. Okay. And w- why was one of the guys yeah. that they that wait they a minute? Dropped. So you're an a- you're a, you're a Broadway actor. I'm a Broadway musical theater actor. Yes, I didn't yeah. know. And still, you are. I still am. I went I went out oh, and uh, and great. worked with Mel Brooks a little bit on on Young Frankenstein for like a couple days. We I went out and hung out with him, and then he helped me get my it's a this is a weird story but he kind of helped me secure being a series regular on nickelodeon because on what show i was on big time rush on nickelodeon this boy band show and so he knew that like he knew they they were gonna make me like a reoccurring on the show and so he wanted me to come and do maybe come and do like a understudy as uh the monster and and uh a couple other characters he plays strictly monsters on broadway yes a lot of monsters and how did you know how did you know mel brooks initially so mel's uh son max brooks is married to my cousin michelle so we actually the three of us uh by the way this is uh, when he said 
keep your Sunday clear reminded me one time Stephen tells us, oh, yeah, he's like, hey, yeah. keep your Sunday clear. I've got something we're going to do. And we're right. like, okay. And this is how good friends they are. They didn't ask what it was. They just said, okay. 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 Clear. And he said, Unlike dress nice. Like me. He said, said dress nice. Suit. That's yeah. all he said. So and, put on a suit. And keep in mind, that's knowing that other times he said, keep Sunday it's clear. It's been awful. And it was like. It's been a nightmare. Uh, this but place has the. Fish tacos. Yeah. Never yeah. Tried fish right. tacos. Yes. Yes. Oh, so God. thanks. I go uh, I pick him up. I pick Mike up. We pick up our friend David Cade. Yeah. And we drive down to Costa Mesa from Hollywood. Yeah. The whole way we're just like, so what what are we doing? He's like, I'm gonna don't worry. It's gonna be good. You're gonna like it. So we go down to Costa Mesa, we get down there, and he's like, wait here, I'm gonna go get tickets. Comes back, and then he comes back with tickets, he's like we're going to see Blazing Saddles with 3,000 people in the Performing Arts Center. Then we're going to see Mel Brooks speak on stage about making the movie. Then we're going backstage to meet Mel Brooks. And we're like, all right, I'm glad yeah. I got my Sunday <laughs> open. Right. Wow. You delivered. So we all hung out in the now, dressing room. Now, wait a minute. And, but, and you guys got you guys wore suits? Yeah, we yeah. all dressed up. Oh, we yeah. all That's wore suits. nice. And we all went backstage and we uh, sat down with Mel in the, in the green room and just hung out the, the, what a the terrific four man. or five of us and talked about His you know, office. Things. It's like meeting the Pope of comedy. When yeah. Yeah. Of course yeah. it is. He's the, he's the sweetest guy. Well, and Hit. us in suits looked like the Three Stooges preparing for a date. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah. we may as well have had bowler hats and like flowers and stuff. It was embarrassing. His office is right Next to our was right next to our offices, um, on on the Sony lot of Justified, and he was a huge oh, okay. Justified fan. Oh, he's so great, and yeah, rightly he's so, so. He's so great. Man. He said him and Carl, uh, uh, only they get together like once a week, uh, once right? a week or a yeah. couple couple times a week, and yeah. they sit and they watch all the NYPD shows, like all the yeah. all the uh, CSI shows. Oh, That's they the only, do. They love that stuff, and they love wow. sitting together and watching like. Uh, like uh, like thriller movies, you know, uh, like scary, right. not scary movies, but like you know, someone's been kidnapped. God kind of love them. ransom God things, love and them. God, they're the best. <laughs> they're the coolest. Wow. So so yeah, um, when when I was uh when I was out there doing the the workshop and all that jazz, um, just the the timing of how much work, like working on a, on one of those shows is like, it's insane. You, you know, it's early morning and it's late. Mm -hmm. It's like, not like TV where you're, you have so much time to what sit show? around. And what when, when I was working on the Shrek, on the Shrek musical, yeah. the amount of time that I was there, I mean, I, I was there uh, like nine, 10 hours a day and nine, 10 hours a day. I, I did not stop moving and running yeah. around like a crazy that's person. That's a workshop. Though. Yeah. That's, that's a lot yeah. of work. Like when I, when you get hired to go in, like to do. me, yeah. I just rehearse all day during the rehearsal until the, the eight days of rehearsal that they give you, and then like on the and the first time you you sing or dance with the orchestra is your first night on stage. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then you're doing oh, eight yeah. shows a week. Then you're doing eight shows a week. It's I just, like I just yeah. feel like that's so much more intense than doing a, a comedy TV show, or doing a funny oh, show. Totally. I mean, yeah, that's what I love about it. It's like yeah. a, a, I mean, don't get me wrong. Wilbur was such an easy part. You had that song at the beginning of the second act that always got an encore, yeah. and you came on and off stage and just did funny stuff. And, oh, so and I had the luxury of having Paul, who was – he and I really invested in having a, a relationship. You know, it wasn't like – you know, it wasn't like there was a one big fat guy, you know, speaking out of the corner of his mouth and, you know, ad-libbing to the audience. We really played the characters of a married and a – uh, of a couple who were really in love. Did you go and have yeah. dinners together and go and spend time together? Paul outside and I, of it? um, a little, not a lot. Yeah, but I loved him. Yeah, still do. But we, he, what did he do? I don't know. I you kind of had to bond a little. In yeah, between, yeah, 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 yeah. No, and yeah. but we were that first week of rehearsal was in, you know t intense, and then no, we hung. I shouldn't say we didn't hang. We yeah. hung. We definitely hung. When, when I was doing Shrek, the guy who was playing Donkey was Dean Edwards, who was on SNL, and Dean so Edwards. Um, he's he was a cast member on, on yeah, Saturday yeah, yeah. Trying very to remember, funny stand-up comedian, and every night him and me would go out and do stand-up together, and he, uh, and I was like, <laughs> I didn't know you did stand-up. Yeah, 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 yeah. We um, all, all three that's of how us we know Renaissance man, yeah, man. So, they would get me uh he'd get me into like all these comedy clubs and get and like help me get auditions and stuff for the clubs oh, wow. so that he could take me around with him and then i you know we just bonded so much yeah. then and then you know doing a show together playing best friends and stuff was like, yeah i mean paul I paul was gay yeah so i didn't have you know we had nothing in common <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing there was no you know i had to keep it i had to be safe <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's, it's you know, because he he would get handsy during yeah. the play. And I wouldn't know what. To... No, am he... I acting right now? <laughs> <Am> I... <laughs> yeah, the, I didn't want to cross that line. 
I didn't feel safe with Paul. No, he was <laughs> he was amazing, and he was very helpful to me because he had done the Vegas version of the show, so he knew the show. Yeah. So yeah. he had to watch. He he was very patient with me and very helpful with me in terms of, you know, guiding me through the songs and through. Yeah, it was just he he was very That's patient very with cool. me. Yeah. I mean, not that he. We, we had eight days, yeah, and like, right. and my Still, son, yeah. who was in law school at the time in New York, was would come like you know because he's my kid. He was very sweet. He'd come to like every performance for the first week, and even four shows into it, at the end of the play, walking home, he said, "You don't really know that." dance at the end of the play yet do you oh i'm like no i still don't because you don't oh you know God. there's that that closing yeah. number was just like the biggest closing number in the history of closing numbers and uh <laughs> and uh and it was okay for wilbur to kind of like bounce around and sure, sure, but, sure. Anyway, yeah. but i killed it at the end all right <laughs> matt do you want to talk you want to talk about dear john i have to talk about dear john. all right i was begging you to try to get jerry burns on the show for like two months <laughs> so we could talk about dear john what do you want to know uh it's such a good show that is overlooked, I think, by people. It's not one that – like I was dur- – my four years of high school were the four years that show ran. Mm-hmm. And I watched it when I was in high school, and I didn't get it. Like it was on, mm-hmm. I didn't watch it, but I didn't care. Mm-hmm. As an adult watching that show, I look back and I'm like, this show is fucking brilliant. Oh, thank you. It's so good. Like just the the whole like the – Judd Hirsch and his character, and you got like, you know, Ralphie who's like a sad sack. Right. And, you know, the the characters assembled on there – are so funny as caricatures of types of people yeah. that you meet. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so going through that show, yeah. you have legendary director Hal Cooper, yeah. right, who did right. Maud, right. uh, which is another great show. Right. Back then, he did Taxi, I think, with Judd Hirsch, right? Is that uh, how he came over? No, I don't think he did Taxi. Okay. He was not in the Judd. He and Judd were not allied. The guy that, the uh, guy that created okay. the show. Peter Berg? Peter Berg? Was he? No, 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 no. No. Might have been the, the guy that created the show was Ed Weinberger. Ed Weinberger, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Peter Berg was like 18 years old. Okay. I'm starting to no, think he's you a, never watched he, this show. I don't watch <laughs> no. the credits of the show. I no, watch no, no, the show. No, so Ed Weinberger – no, Peter Peter wasn't 18 years yeah. old. But um, So no, Ed Weinberger, and then Ed was just too difficult for – certain members of the of the studio or whatever he, he he's a he's a he's a uh, he's a crazy genius and they decided it, it was still his show i mean he still made all the money from it but they brought in hal cooper and uh hal cooper and his partner uh, Bur- uh, i was thinking Rod peter Par- noah Rod Rod thinking oh peter noah yeah, yeah yeah uh and peter became peter was sort of the um the voice of reason when ed mm-hmm. was there and then Peter, I think he stayed with us, but maybe not um, during the Hal and Rod years. And we only okay. lasted like it's four seasons. Four right? seasons, yeah. yeah. But we could have gone on for a long time, but they kept changing our time slot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you never, you, you couldn't get momentum. Yeah, with that. you never knew when we were. And on then it. that show was uh, an adaptation of a British show. Yes. And did you study the British version? No, of I didn't look at it at all. Or? No, 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 no. Okay. And then your character, like when you first read a Kirk Morris scene. Mm. Right, like, how does that strike you as as an actor? Like, you read this, and it's just such, uh, like, such a slime ball, basically, sort of what they're playing him up as. But he's so funny. Yeah, um, yeah, and you know, it just, I mean, I think I've ended up playing people who are slimy or cruel or weird, and I think I've been able to. I think I don't do it consciously, but somehow, somehow, they become likable. Like, except for. Yeah. No, except for Mike. You were very likable. Except for Mike. I just felt you had a karmic you're debt. De- to you're pay. dead to me, Mike. You're Unjustified. dead to me. You're dead Unjustified. to me. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I've 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 been lucky to turn you know to find characters yeah, who are on like, the surface on the surface uh, mm-hmm. repulsive, but then find the lovability in like them. Like there's there's episodes where like Judd Hirsch breaks up with you as a friend. Yeah, you know, and there's people like <laughs> so they stop great. talking to you, and it's like a thing where he has like. He's asking you, you're at dinner at Kate's restaurant on the scene, oh. and he's like, so when you break up with a girl, what do you do? And you're like, oh, I give her flowers, I kiss her on the forehead, I say I wasn't meant to be, and I push her off. And he's like trying to break up with you as a friend, and finally he's like, hey, flower guy, and he gives you some flowers, kisses you on the head, and he's like, it's time for you to go. Oh my you know, it's God. like he does, and it's just so But I don't done, remember, like but I don't get it, right? Do yeah. I get it? Or maybe I, uh, oh, maybe no, it takes at first a, you don't. Yeah. yeah, and then it takes a, and then I'm crestfallen. Yeah, and and been <laughs> it's, heartbroken beyond you're in a belief. Room with these people, and they all hate you, but they tolerate you. Like right. your right. cohorts on the show. Which so is, you're saying he got his comeuppance on this show? <laughs> well, <laughs> not really, because here's the thing: 
he always finds a way to win because they there was a whole thing how he would never share anything with the group like his character was very closed off they're, there's they're in a support group and you're supposed to share experiences and he would never tell them anything about his <laughs> or own I'd, life or he'd make a joke of it he'd make a joke and he always be like oh i'm in the cia and i was a spy or whatever <laughs> and there's one episode where finally you hire like a helicopter to come and you go out the window on a rope ladder on a helicopter yeah, to fly they're... off to go fight the bad guys and they were just like what the hell just happened? Like it's you are always. I'm talking. You I'm always saying, find a way to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love. Fun. I love that show. So good. People oh, reference that. People yeah. reference that. Me climbing out the window and onto the rope ladder. <laughs> yeah, but and but it was all preceded by. <laughs> oh yeah. Everybody said, "What's going on?" The whole shaking, building's starting yeah. to shake, and then a rope ladder and the winds coming comedy in. Comedy gold. Leaves yeah, are well coming done. in. Helicopters the are like, comedy do you, gold. Do you remember any like favorite Kirk Morris lines from that show? Does anything like stick in you? Like, oh, this was something that was really funny. Although I do remember the um, there was a scene where I had um, I had a can of pheromones that I would, <laughs> I was I, I I I was convinced that if I sprayed the uh, this pheromone spray yeah. on me, the chicks would just be drawn to me <laughs> but we got a uh but we got a contain they got a t- container of like it was so high pressured that everyone <laughs> every time i <laughs> i'm laughing now uh we talk all about the pheromones i said mm-hmm. these guys are we're all in a group the whole cast is in a group and we're at a dance and i'm and they're like, what are you using, Kirk? I'm like, oh, I got some pheromone spray. I'm really, I'm really going to kill it with the babes tonight. <laughs> and uh, and they're like, uh, okay, okay, Kirk, all right, whatever you got. And then a little buzzer goes off, and I go, oh, time for my treatment. And I pull out this thing, and I shake it up. And, <laughs> it, just, and it, it sprays. It's such a high pressure <laughs> spray that my my face goes yep. back like like in a, like I'm in a fight uh, like I'm in a wind tunnel. Yeah. Just like, oh my! Oh, God. <laughs> my skin's going back, and they all have to and they all have to just stand there like this. We had to do it so many fucking times. I remember that episode. No God. one yeah. could not break. And then and then you know and then and then and and we had to have five people not break at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Like four could make it through, but right. one person would go. Then that person would go and then everyone would go. I mean, we were there all night. and the audience and the audience <laughs> laughed at it every, every, time. every fucking time. time. Yeah. So that I remember that I remember. I, one of my favorites was uh, there was a Christmas episode and you were supposed to pick up like <laughs> candy that you were going to put in these Christmas baskets to give away to like oh, impoverished yeah. kids or whatever. Right, right. And then like you you screwed up and you wasted all the money whatever because. Kirk's always doing that. Yeah. Right. And then he comes in, he's like, Hey, sorry, I'm late. I was out doing a little caroling and some Monica ing and some <laughs> Kathleen ing. <laughs> no. It's just like, it was just so funny. He'd always do the motion with your arm every time. Yeah. And- but that one, I think that one was also in that episode was. Um, I fucked, I lost the money or I spent the money. So all I could get was Halloween yeah, decorations. Halloween <laughs> and, and so we walk into the room, you know, it's one of those scenes where you walk, you walk into the room with them, you flick on the lights and then it's just festooned with, <laughs> with <stuff>. cornucopia <laughs> yeah. and, and autumn leaves. And I go, well, this it's beginning. Great. No, I go, yeah. it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> You know, what, you know what I love? Uh, one of the things I love so much about like present day is that and the way that things are with television and movies and stuff is that you can actually go and watch this show yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard to find, though. If you if you don't watch it late at night, you can get it on Antenna TV. And it's, you can get what it on, about YouTube? It's not on what Netflix. about YouTube? On YouTube, YouTube there's some rips, yeah, but it's like really there. bad quality because I've looked for mm-hmm. it on there, mm-hmm. and then there's like some on there, but it's not real good, and there's like a few clips, but it's not. Like well, you can't like, find the whole look, series. Like you can't just I, go to Netflix and watch it. Look, when, when I was a kid, I yeah. remember taking a special trip to the Museum of Radio and Television say, yeah. so I could watch Greatest American Hero and watch an track, episode yeah. of uh, of what's it called of uh, Kids in the Hall that I couldn't <laughs> find anymore because wow. there were no yeah. DVDs to go yeah, get stuff. Have, there was YouTube no YouTube wasn't around. YouTube wasn't yeah. around, and it was it's you know. But right now, it's like you can like you can have new fans right now of shows that have been canceled for 40 yeah. years like that's yeah. fast that's fascinating absolutely it's bananas i'm, I'm one it. of those people all the time like watch a lot of old tv shows yeah and it's i mean i watch so much johnny carson now way more than i ever did when he was on like i, I watch it all the time you know now he got me into watching johnny carson wow. and so i watch and then we use it for our for like our wow. stuff that we're working on but, yeah i know um, I, re- I was going like this because yeah. johnny always had the uh, the ashtray yeah just out yeah. of frame 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. yeah. It was funny. They show everything from like the early 70s up through when he retired. And you can see the smoking get less and less and less depending mm. on the year that it's in. Like if mm. it's like 1985, you don't see a cigarette anywhere. If it's 1974, he's just smoking yeah, away, yeah, yeah, puffing yeah. away right, on right, the, right, in the chair. Right. Um, well, listen, we we do have to wrap up shortly, but there are a couple small things I want to just throw yeah. throw in there yes. real quick. Um, number one, mm. Max Hedrum, we mentioned earlier, one of the greatest, uh, weirdest. That's what I so wish was ahead of its time. Yeah. So ahead, ahead of its time. time. Yeah. 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 Phenomenal. Um, a television show about the, the decline of television or the right. evil yeah. of television. Yeah. yeah. Loved it. Amazing. Um, we we were doing a little Googling. You played yourself on the TV show Blossom. Is that a real thing? Did that really happen? I think no. I did not play myself because I wasn't <laughs> really anyone at the time. I think I played. Oh, maybe I did play myself. Maybe I did play myself. Just a weird credit. I just saw it. I was like, you played yourself. Was, on maybe Blossom. I crossed over into their show. It might have been, there was like an NBC show at yeah, the I same time was, as Dear yeah, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would would he yeah. come over and? And just play himself. I may have been playing my character, or maybe I was playing me. I don't know. I don't How remember. Weird is that? Um, yeah, I just say whoa. Yeah, we're <laughs> both. We're yeah. We're no. both. Uh, we're all big fans of of uh, Bob with Bob Newhart. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Which you which you were on. Wow. Which is uh if you, if there's is there footage out there of it that probably people some. can find on YouTube. It was into. It was a different. Bob Newhart had such successful shows before that where he played like a really nice guy, and then he does this show where he's not really a nice guy, and it was such a weird turn. That put his career, yeah. that put his TV sitcom career to bed. That's yeah. insane because yeah. yeah. he's he's amazing. He's a legend. I mean, I he was yeah. fantastic on those yeah. other shows. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, and then of course, um, Burn Notice. Burn Notice. You know, Love there's all notice. the all the like there's you know Burn Notice, Bates Motel, Breaking Bad. You know, the Breaking Bad. Uh, you go on and you play essentially a uh, drug counselor, yeah, on there, and it, it's, yeah. well, you've been sober now for sixteen years. Yeah, how'd like you that? know that? I read it the other day. Really? That's I mean, online. I, it's yeah, it was on Jimmy Pardo's podcast. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 it's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and that means that it would came be, out. It was sixteen September twenty sixth. Well, congratulations! Yeah, congratulations. yeah. yeah. Mazel tov. Rig- rig- uh, uh, I didn't do anything, but you were up. also in uh, Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles around mm. the same time you got sober. So, was that Rock Bottom that mm-hmm. movie? Is that good grief? How the fuck that? Wow. Right? <laughs> Holy shit. That's I mean, no, 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 no. It's an but, indictment. It is. <laughs> no. Have you seen Crocodile in Los yeah. Angeles? It should be indicted. That's no, it. I mean, it wasn't, it had nothing to do with that movie or any, <laughs> but it didn't era? have anything to do with the with those people. It had to do with my state of mind. And, and I think, yeah, and that was, oh, wow. I'm I sure that helped. That'll yeah. be the next, the next podcast will, uh, the next yeah. time I'll give you the yeah, story. Because that movie has a great story about how uh, the writer of it, uh, one of the writers, Matthew Barry, is now best known as the fabulous Mr. Roto on ESPN, where he's a fantasy football expert. That's what he does now. Wow. But he wrote that movie, wow. and uh, I heard him tell the story on Howard Stern where he talked about how when he wrote that movie, Paul Hogan came in, and he rewrote the movie, and then he tried to get Matthew Barry and his writing partner taken oh off as God. writers, saying it was a brand new script, and they were just going to get a story by credit. They had to go to the Guild to get their credits restored, mm. and they said what he would do is he would change stuff like, Hey, you get out of here to like, hey, mate, get out of here. And he'd be like, oh, it's a totally new line. Like, that's a totally different movie <laughs> wow. now. Yeah. Oh, that's a skeezy, skeezy thing. Yeah. Yeah. He was not a fan of Paul Hogan. No, I mean, but before we go, I got to ask because I have friends who will break my legs if I don't. Mm, yes, um, of do you have any stories from uh, during Burn Notice with Bruce Campbell? No. None. <laughs> okay. No, Bruce was so a nice I guy. I asked. No, no. Uh, I asked everyone, and no, his, a, he had no stories. Yep. Journeyman, journeyman, work hardy, working hard actor. Yeah. We love Bruce yeah. Campbell so yeah. much. Yeah. Uh, I just saw him at Comic Con on his panel great. for Ash. Doesn't versus he have Evil some Dead. big thing going on now? What he's is, doing uh, Ash versus Evil Dead. Evil Dead? Yeah, yeah, right, 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 yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, he's the um, star of that, right? Yeah, yeah amazing. Yeah, oh. I just saw him at Comic Con. I'm did happy his panel for him. I'm happy for him. I was just over at a. I I was at Warner Brothers when they were starting to tape the Muppets show, and I got to go and check out that set, and that. Was, was so amazing. cool, right? Amazing, and you were so great on that show. Oh, thank that you. Was your, so your daughter awesome. was dating Fozzie on yeah. the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I was like, oh god, do I have to? Because um, Bill Prady asked me to do it as a favor. I'm like, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I want to do a favor for Bill, but I'm course, like, yeah. 
Oh, the Muppets. Oh, God. I don't know. I acting with puppets. And then I got there, and it was just so fucking enchanting. Oh. And, and they're so good, those puppeteers. Oh, and it was like, you were like acting with a real actor. I mean, yeah. it, instead of a big sock. You know, I, you didn't yeah. know it was a big sock. It was like, those are, I mean, those guys are amazing. It was amazing. so, it was so cool. Yeah. I, had, I had an amazing time. If you um, get a chance, see Puppet Up in, yeah. here in L.A. Yeah. It if you sells out it's in Vegas time. now. See what? Uh, Puppet Up Puppet is up. Uh, yeah. is Brian Henson and all of the puppeteers from the Jim Henson Company have their own weird original mm. puppets and it's then like they an do they do improv but it's on for stage oh yeah, yeah it's yeah, dirty yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. speaking of dirty really and yes. literally I uh, I was uh, stuck in San Diego in a we on the beach in this weird hotel while my girlfriend was out doing some weird job that she was doing and. Uh, it happened to be the premiere of Angie Tribeca, mm. and I when was they like, showed like twenty hours in a row. Yeah, yeah I caught that. I caught Absolutely. all twenty ten, hours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, it was the, the, it was the binge the yeah. marathon. Yes, yeah. it was the bingeathon, and not only that, there Kevin Ry- Kevin Riley, yeah. who's the president, yeah, is a uh, is a fucking genius. Yeah, right. Uh, and he is yeah. so in touch with what great comedy and what great alt comedy is yeah. because. Uh, so much so that our dear friend Brent Weinbach and yep. uh, DJ Doug Pound, who have both been on the nighttime show live uh, here at the Improv, okay, they were ju- uh, Brent was just on it Saturday yeah. on the show. Brent yeah. was Brent Brent yeah. Weinbach was just okay. on the show this okay. past Saturday. Yeah. They were both on in between episodes. They would show them and have them do like songs and weird bits mm. and stuff on like the telethon thing. Mm-hmm. It was so funny that show that I you're those on. Guys. Yeah. That show that you were on is absolutely. <laughs> brilliant it is the funniest weirdest show uh it pushes uh it's like naked gun like yeah. like height where they have you joke, seen the transition have you seen seen the second season i've seen some of it yeah. okay because there's yeah. a transition oh, that okay. we're all pretty pleased with i mean there's oh. a different look there's a different palette there's mm-hmm. a different yeah. style we brought the lights way down we're putting in smoke we're making it much oh, more cool. like a csi oh, you oh know? Nice. that's yeah awesome. and we play it deadly serious That's i mean awesome. like we don't even acknowledge the that trick. there's a that, joke yeah you know, yeah yeah, like, yeah yeah it was a little tweak and i yeah. think it really has made the show better yeah i gotta uh, tell you my yeah. dad raised me on comedy like more than anything yeah. else he was that was his thing mm-hmm. and his favorites were airplane naked gun there was a show you might not remember called sledge i do i do sledge yeah. Okay. Sledgehammer. Yeah. yeah and when this marathon came on I got about five minutes into the first episode, and I called my dad, and I was like, "Dad, you gotta oh, put this show on." Oh, good. And he was like, "What is?" And uh, he was like, and "That did. doesn't sound like what does that title mean?" And I was like, "Just put it on." Oh, and so great. he called me up uh, the next day because he stayed up all night watching it. And he was like, "Thank oh, you gosh. so much for telling me about that." Oh, so yeah, thanks, it, it, guys. You guys nailed it, man. Thank you. you really bring families and together. I, and I write it. I write the whole thing. I write every episode. <laughs> <laughs> so. He'll be thrilled. <laughs> yeah, and, and, I'm, and I'm and I'm and I'm designing the I'm designing the yeah the costumes, the clothes, and everything. All the yeah. clothes. He's a, yeah. he's an auteur. When yeah. you guys have, <laughs> I mean, you have Dion Cole, and you've got uh, everybody, everyone that works on right? that show. I mean, Corell is so funny, and his wife is so funny. Yeah, uh, such a fantastic show. Where when can they watch it? What's when do the episodes air? Do you do you know? So the um, we're available on Hulu right now. Mm-hmm. The whole first season. Right. And then the second season is um, you can watch on um, TBS wow. on Monday nights, or you can on demand it and just watch it at your leisure. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Great. I love it. You got to check it out. So Angie funny. Tribeca is so incredibly funny. And we're look. We have there's so many things that we wanted to talk to you about after school specials and everything oh, else yeah. that we want to <laughs> talk to you about. We'll have to come back. Yeah, yeah. if you yeah. want to come, come back, back, we'd totally. love to have you Anytime. come back no. sometime. No. Where can people find you on uh, Twitter? Can we and... can we just get another half hour of my early years? <laughs> I want to we'll probably squeeze it in. Actually. Let's do 45 minutes. <laughs> no, I mean now, time. and I meant now. No, <laughs> not, not, not. <laughs> Yes, I would love to come back. You guys, are, you guys rock. You rock. Thank you so much. Uh, where can people find you on the internet, on Twitter and things like that? I guess I'm on Twitter. I don't really know how to do it <laughs> He's on Twitter. well. I'm on Facebook. Jerry Burns on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Jerry Burns. I have, I have a, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I'm on Twitter and um, I'm on um, the phone. I, I have a phone. Wow. Which, you're yeah, I have a smartphone. Smart yeah, it smart works. Phone. I can email with people. <laughs> That's so they can figure out what my email is. There you and go. I probably can. Be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Mike, uh, where can people find you, buddy? I'm mostly on Instagram, at Mike Black Attack. 
You can see yes. lots of cool action figure pictures. Yes, yes. from oh Comic Con. I keep it real nerdy on there, so <laughs> you really, <laughs> Make really sure do. Check it out. No way. What? You do not. And Vaginas yes. are drying up all over the, <laughs> yeah. all over the world oh, as they hear God. about this. Vaginas <laughs> are drying up. <laughs> Matt, you can uh, check me out that. at funnymat.com. Find links to everything there. Or if you don't like <laughs> what I had to say, go to mattwalkersucks.com and let me know. Yes, uh, when people do. Uh, and then, of course, guys, uh, the nighttime show live. It, the next one is August 27th at the Hollywood Improv in Los Angeles. 10 p.m. It, yeah, 10 p.m. Uh, you know, if uh, if you if you get a chance to come out to the show, it's always full of surprises. We had a uh, this, gold medal winner, had, Michaela Maroney. Well, was time? on the last show as yeah. well as uh, Mr. Belding mm-hmm. from wow. Saved by the Bell. We had Belding on the show. The, and as we well. had um, legendary comic Tom Dreesen. Tom Dreesen How'd was on the show. How'd you get Belding? I, I just, you know. We, we know people. You it's know weird, people. I, I know people. Jesus. I know some people in this town. A couple people. Wow. Little we we he get had to lock his family in the closet. But still, <laughs> I, had, I had to get it. we got him. Uh, but yeah, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, and uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube is at Stephen Glickman S T E P H E N Glickman. Um, thank you so much for checking out the nighttime show. And Jerry, you're an, a, a phenomenon, and being able to oh, sit down with you and chat you. with you about oh, your career. Thank you is guys. It was insane. really really fun. It's great. Uh, my Time mom flew. loves you as well. I love you know, her. I know you do. <laughs> Give her my best. Tell her. Tell her uh, yourself tomorrow night. <laughs> 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 oh, Good night.